This is episode 59 of the Ruby Moss Cottage Yurtcast. We are living life high up in the Great Smoky Mountains in a yurt. So settle in and we'll talk about all things yurty and crofty and that little thing called life. Can I come back? Hot dog sauce, we're out of That's gonna be good. In the beginning stage, we've got six hours left. Oh, can't wait. Hey, everybody, welcome back to our yurt, our young sweet young. I'm tucked back into my little nook, my little crofty nook. How have you been? Welcome back to our yurt, our yom, sweet yom. We are in my little crofty slice of the pie. To It's evening. I don't record often in the evening, but I don't know. I just felt like I had an exciting day with makers and I thought, okay, I'm going to just, I'm going to record this evening. So here we are. I have my cuppa. Do you have yours? This evening, I have a tea that is, I bought from a little local shop close by. Um, the shop is called Snake Song. Don't really like the name of the shop because I hate snakes, but I love her teas and her minerals and her herbs and plants and things. So, I bought this a while back. It's called it's called Sarsaparilla Slumber. And it has valerian, rose petals, cinnamon, sarsaparilla, and St. John's wort in it. So, that is what I have in my cuppa this evening. And look at this cuppa. On this side it says it says big sister, middle sister, little sister. And then on this side it says sisters forever, never apart. Maybe in distance, but never in heart. And so, uh, my oldest sister had a birthday in July. And like you do with most younger siblings, you buy them a present too. When you buy the older sibling a present. So, my middle sister bought my sister this. And she got her some other things, but she had to get me a gift too. So, this was what I got. And I love it. It's so always feel close to my sister's. We had recently had a sister's weekend up here, and we had such fun. We visited down in our little town. We weren't here long. We had only, um, we came up Friday evening after they got off work, and then we spent all day Saturday and Sunday, and then we left. Actually, we got up Sunday, got ready, and um, cleaned up everything, and then went down into town, had coffee and fried pies. And then we left. So we really just had all day Saturday here, but we had fun. We got water. And so I don't know if I've already put the um, videos and pictures of our weekend in here or 
if it is in the promo, but hopefully you'll see those videos and you'll get to share in some of our joy. Let's get the foot up here. What are you guys doing? Her pretty, her, her pretty shoes and her painted toenails. Um, could you? And we're let getting me see water. The we're getting water. Oh, it is nice. And, uh, Cities come to town. Country. Queen of knitting. Yep. This no. is the queen of Instagram. This is the queen of babies. Babies. Not making them. Queen <laughs> Watch of them. baby. She's she's the queen of. The sisters she's the queen of love you and i have tennis shoes on she has sparkly shoes on <laughs> debbie tell the knitting world hello, hello and that someday world. you're going to knit i'll buy all your merchandise <laughs> not all of it <laughs> <laughs> all right debbie king is getting started today This is what life's all about Sisters in Brighton City. Sisters Weekend. Sisters Weekend in the mountains, getting water. How do I get my picture in the video? Um, Here, bring okay. I'll turn it around and take it from this angle. Sharon changed her clothes in the car. She has new clothes on, new earrings. Anything guys can do, girls can do better. Things we do for our sisters. Is it? Oh, that's good. We're down to the last bar on this thing. Okay. That goes pretty fast. We had a great time. We watched movies and um, knit and just got caught up on all of the family gossip and, you know, like you do with your sisters. But yeah, so that's what's in my cup, the hot tea, the slumber tea, and then my cup is from my sister. So, it has been a while since I've recorded, and every time I'm off for a long break like this, it's so hard to get started. It's just like I can't find my groove and even the greeting. So, hopefully this is not as awkward as it feels. Hopefully it doesn't look as awkward on your end. So... Yeah, I've been running back and forth a lot to Charlotte. I think I've told you before my husband uh, has started his consulting business back up. So he's he's been doing a little more traveling. And so if I don't go with him, then sometimes I stay here. But more than not, I'm in Charlotte with the grandbabies and my daughters and my mom and my sisters. And so I have been going back and forth a lot to Charlotte. Let me tell you what happened to me. Okay. On one of my trips to Charlotte, I'm just driving along on the interstate like you do. And there's like, I don't, I'm probably three or four lanes of traffic. And I don't know what made me look down at my feet, but I looked down at my feet. And there was a mouse. Oh my gosh. I've always wondered how I would react if I was in a really fearful situation. You know, like you have dreams where you're trying to run and you're just like running in water and you can't get the traction going or you're trying to scream for help and nothing comes out of your mouth. I discovered that my natural instinct when something scares the crap out of me is this guttural noise that I didn't even know I had within me, I would venture to say I've never made that kind of a noise or, or that loud of a noise in my life. I do not know how I did not have a wreck. 
no clue how that happened. I went crazy for, I don't even know how long. I mean, like, I really feel like I lost my mind. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So I've got my hands on the, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I'm driving, and, what do I do? And I'm like, okay, there, why call anybody? I, no one can help me. I am here all alone. What am I going to do? And so I'm driving and I'm, I'm just scared to death. And I've got this leg up and I've got this foot on the gas pedal and it will not, I won't let it touch the ground, the, the floor. I just have it on the gas pedal and I'm, I'm driving. I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I'm hitting the side of my seat like this, like, cause if that, if, if that mouse is under my seat, I want it gone. So I've got this leg up in the air and I've got this one on the floorboard and I'm going, what am I going to do? 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 And I know cars had to have seen me. They've had to have thought, this woman, what is she doing? I mean, like, I was in a world all my own. And when I came to, I'm realizing, oh my gosh, I am in, I think it was three lanes of traffic. That It was four, but there was, it happened right at an exit. So I think it was three lanes of traffic. And, and I woke up and I thought, oh my gosh, how did I keep from having a wreck? And so many thoughts are going through my mind and I'm banging the seat. I've got one leg up in the air, one leg on the, and I'm just, and I just don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm thinking, okay, I could pull over and open the doors, but I'm not going to know if that mouse gets out. I, I mean, this could be hours. I would have to wait. And then I never really know if that mouse got out. So I thought, okay, I know that there is a Home Depot up here, a couple exits. So I got to the Home Depot and then I start texting, texting, like texting Todd, texting my sisters. I don't know. It just made me feel better to tell people. And so I said, I'm going to go in Home Depot and I'm going to get mouse traps. It's the only thing I know to do. So I went to Home Depot. I went in Home Depot and I bought anything and everything that was for mice. I know. I kept thinking, when I check out, she's going to think that I have, my, I have an infestation of mice in my home. And, you know, I'm not going to explain to her. No, they're my, it's in my truck out here. So, I've got the sticky pads that so that when they get on, they get just kind of like glue pads that they get stuck to it. I've got the actual traps. I had to buy some kind of glue. It, it's not glue, but it was a gummy thing that said that, that, that it would draw mice quicker than cheese or peanut butter. So I got that. I got these mint bags that was meant to repel mice so that you would hang them. So what else did I get? Oh, and I got granules, mice granules. I don't know what I thought I was going to do with them, but I ended up using them when I got back here. I spread them all over the, all around the truck that sits in the lane. <sighs> okay. So I'll go back out to the truck with all this stuff. Thankfully it was self checkout. So I, I didn't have to feel bad. No one saw it. So I get back in the truck. And so I set out the sticky pads. I'm setting the traps. I snap my finger in a trap. Um, so I've got three, three traps set, three mouse traps set, or three of the gluey pad things set. And then I have these mint bags. They're just like, uh, you know, almost like voodoo, you know, like just sending out the vibes, stay away. So I did all that and I thought, okay, I guess I'm going to have to go on because I didn't know what else to do. So I set all that out and still I'm driving. Now I do feel a little better. I mean, I, I do put my foot back down, but I keep stamping it and I keep hitting the seat every now and then as I'm driving, stamping, hitting the seat. And I go a couple more exits and I think, okay, well, it's time to get gas. So I pulled over to get gas and I just looked back. And the mouse was stuck on that little glue pad. Ooh. <sighs> so now I have to get that glue pad out of my truck and into the trash. And I don't care if the humane thing would have been to take it out and trying to get the mouse off. You know, I don't even want to hear it. No. So I, I went, I had to go in the gas station and buy a bag because I had nothing to put the mouse in. 
So I went in there and bought chips or something and came back out and I had that bag. So I, I got, I put my hand down in the bag and got the tip of the little mouse thing and uh, put it in the bag, took the bag out and threw it away. <sighs> but I was able then to drive pretty securely like, okay, I'm good. And then I thought, well, what if there's more? So I had more of the sticky things. So the next stop, you know, I still had one in the passenger and one in the back here. So I put the other one in this other passenger seat. So I still had three, had the mouse traps, had the mint bags and had the granules. They were at least sitting on the, hadn't done anything with them yet at that point. <sighs> This stuff only happens to me, only happens to me. I never, ever have anybody saying, oh yeah, I've had mice in my truck, but I didn't get any more mice the whole trip, so that must have just been the one mouse in the truck. However, I have caught another mouse in my truck, one. So I leave the traps set in my truck. And that's another thing. Who else has mouse traps permanently set in their truck? But I do. And it makes me feel better. For the longest time, I'd only wear tennis shoes. In, and I wouldn't wear sandals. I just wear tennis shoes because I don't know that that mouse brushed up against my foot. I don't know what made me look down at my feet. I have a feeling it must have. But I, I can't even go there in my mind. I, I, I just can't. I can't do it. So anyway, I haven't caught any mice for quite a few weeks now, quite a few, at least in two weeks, but I have put granules all around the lane. I have, um, put more of those mint bags out. Um, I just hope I never have any more mice. That was really quite an ordeal. So that's what's going on in my world. We have had quite a nice summer up here on the mountain. In Charlotte, the weather is like hell. And then I hear about some of you other people where you live is just so hot. Really up here, I don't think it gets out of the 80s. I've been home for a couple of weeks now. Or no, I haven't. I lied. I haven't been home for a couple of weeks. I've only been home for... Uh, about a week, a week, and it hasn't been out of the 70s, so it's been really nice up here. We get a little rain every day, just kind of, so I don't really have to water outside at all, and so it has been really, really nice. Um, what else? My my little grandson had surgery through this, uh, this time I've been gone, um, had an infection in his foot. They thought he had fractured his foot and then an infection had set in. So they had to go in there and scrape all that infection out. And so he had to wear a boot and everything. But then, then they said maybe no. They didn't know if he had a fracture. Anyway, so he really got loved on. So he's eight. And when he is, um, when he was in the hospital, like, oh my gosh, we all just bought him everything. And so he really loved it. Sorry about that. My husband called. Um, so anyway, I was telling you about my little grandson. He loved it. He was just getting, I mean, just all this attention. So this week she had to take him back for a checkup. And, you know, she had been saying, Jude, is your foot hurting? Jude, is your foot? No, no, my foot doesn't hurt. All for two weeks. No, nope, my foot doesn't hurt. My foot doesn't hurt. When the dog, so then when they get in the, the office, he says to my daughter, he, he says, boy, it's a hospital. I sure do miss this nursing home. I have the best memories here. And so that should have been her clue. The doctor walks in and he asks Jude how he's doing. And Jude tells him his foot's been really hurting. <laughs> so. He was trying to figure out a way to get back in that hospital. And I know it had to do with all the presents and things that he got. So I was there taking care of the two littles while she was in the hospital with him. Oh, my lands, the two littles, they are like 
so Cole is 12 months and Silas was three and Silas was not potty trained, but I started the process. Uh, she had been working with him, but I really ran because I'm like, I got to be here a week. We got to get this kid potty trained. And so we started the process of potty training. She picked it up where, where I left off and I think he's good to go now. But the 12 month old, 13 month old, he still doesn't sleep through the night. And wow, that was hard. So in the daytime, when they took one of their naps together, Gigi took a nap too. But so I did that and I spent some time with my mom. My mom and I went to go see some movies. We went to go see Where the Crawl Dad Sings. <gasps> Love that. We went to go see Elvis. Love that. I mean, it was good. Um, she was really excited about seeing that, but I, you know, it was okay. But I loved Where the Crawl Dad Sings. And someone asked me if it was as good as the book. And I can't remember because I've re it's been so long since I read the book and I really loved the book. But I can't compare the two because it's been so long, but the movie is really, really good. So <sighs> I'm sure I'm leaving some things out that I've been doing, but that is the gist of it. I've got, I got to spend some time with my girlies, um, my daughters. And so I just had a good summer. Although if you know me, I am ready for fall. I'm not a summer girl. Even when they're mild like this up here, I would much rather be wearing sweaters and um, just pants and all that kind of stuff. I love, love, love winter. I'm ready for the snow and the cold. I'm ready for fall even. So I came home today. I went out and for a little bit, I'll tell you a little bit about that. But I thought, ah, oh, I just gonna be cozy. So I put on this sweater and I've got my slippers on and I've got my cuppa and we are just going to talk all things crafty. What I did today, it was so much fun. I, okay. So this is weird. Yesterday I had been working around the, the, especially I've been working over here in the croft area of the nook and just cleaning things, organizing, reworking. And I thought I've got all these drop spindles. I need to either learn how to drop spindle or get rid of them. So that was a passing thought that went through my mind. Then last night when I was going to bed, I was looking through Instagram and a local to me yarn shop was having a drop spindle class today. So I like could not wait for them to open their doors this morning. And I called and said, do you have room for another one? And they said, yes. So I hopped on over there and I went to a drop spindle class. We had a blast. I loved it. And I learned how to drop spindle. Years and years ago, I had um, started dabbling in it, but I didn't even know what I was doing. And so I really enjoyed the class. I enjoyed the people. I love the yarn shop. If you're in the Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, North Georgia mountains, anywhere in the Great Smokies, um, it's in Frank, the yarn shop is in Franklin and it's called Silver Threads. It is a great yarn shop. The yarn they have, the baskets they have, the a, a huge supply of needles, they have all this spinning stuff. Just, it's a great yarn shop in and of itself. But um, today I felt like I got to know some of the people and I just had such fun. It was so much fun. So I will see, did I not bring over? I have to go get my um, little spin, my little skein of yarn that I spun. Because you have to see this. That. Is it showing this? There you go. I did that today. This little mini skein on a drop spindle. So now I get to start drop spindling. These are the spindles that I have. And I had them in the cutest jar. It was a pitcher. It was like just an old... It was just like a woman, oh, it was so adorable. And I just dropped it over there and busted it when I was bringing all the stuff over here. 
so I had to get this one out. But this is these are the this is it's not a big collection of drop spindles. I do like this one though because it has WB on it for West Virginia. That's where I was born and raised. So I've got all my spindles now. I have this. Whoops, I don't want to drop that out again. I had this big basket of roving that I had had from before. And um, so I'm set. I've got roving. I've got, I mean, this is just chock full of roving. And then I'm going to start with this little bag of roving. When I first started podcasting, you remember I lived in Charlotte and the group of ladies that uh, I knit with, we called ourselves the niches. And someone made me this adorable bag that says niches. Now, I don't know who made it, but if you still watch, would you please tell me who you are that made it? Because there's no tag on it. And I know you did it just to be nice. And I don't know if, if you even make bags, but it, it said on it, my niches. <laughs> I've loved this bag forever. And I've, when I found it, it had this roving in it. So I'm going to start with this bright, pretty roving. I had started years ago. I can see what I did. See, it was so thick and thin. But what I did today was really fairly even. So she was a really good teacher. And Christina, if you're watching, I do appreciate that because now you see how I started out doing it myself. And then the difference that a good teacher makes is um, the the... This was much more consistent than this. So, I am looking forward to that. So, another new rabbit hole that I'm going to be going down. I may never spin, like, I may never own a wheel. But, I'm going to have fun with this drop spindles. And, you know, that's probably just enough. I can't ever imagine spinning enough yarn, or, yeah, on a drop spindle to make a sweater or anything like that. But I think I could make hats or gloves or scarves, maybe even shawls. That is my newest endeavor that I'm going to be doing. So let's get started in my bags, okay? Let's talk about what's in my bags. What is in my bags? Okay, remember the blanket that I'm making for my sister, it's crochet. And I marked it with a little progress keeper just to prove to you that I am making progress. So let me show you how much I've crocheted since we've been together. <laughs> Trying to find the where I left off. Wait, here's where I left off. Okay, so when I last podcast, I was to here, so I've done this much more. Not a lot. The thing is, it's just too much to carry with me when I'm traveling. So back and forth to Charlotte, I don't take this with me. And then when I get here, you're going to see something else that I've been working on. And, but I have, I mean, I have worked. I've done a good bit. I've got a candle. I've got to be careful. So, well, that much. It's so pretty. I did show her when she was up here. I hope she likes it. She didn't really. Huh. No, that's right. She really didn't say too much. But. She's going to like it. I'm going to make her like it. Okay. Another thing I'm working on. This is something that I started years ago. I'm going to start, when I start a pattern, I'm going to start make at least writing the year, possibly the month and the year of when I started. Because sometimes, and if you are a big maker, you know this, sometimes you get started on something and then it gets put away for weeks for one other, one reason or another, and then it's years. This has been years. And so this is, it's a, a Rowan pattern and it's called Glad. I am so in love with this sweater. I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see what it looks like there. Can you see? It's just like a sweater that goes over top of a, it's a lightweight sweater that ties. 
Okay, so that's what I'm making. And I have got so much of it done. It's a beautiful, beautiful orange. It's, I had this blocked last night and it was so pretty. And now I've, it's been folded up in this bag. But, so I've got the back done. I've got the two front sides done. Now, you, I'm, on the, I'm on the sleeves now. And so you knit the sleeves flat. And so you have to set them in. I had to piece all this together because everything you knit was flat. Huh. So anyway, I've got the shoulders. I've got, I'm working on the sleeves now. And then I'll set the sleeves in. But I've got the first sleeve almost finished. Eh. Almost finished. A couple more inches, I think. And then the sleeve will be done. The first sleeve will be done. I would try it on, except for I have this other big sweater on. And it's just not going to look that right, that good. But I feel so good to have this sweater almost finished. I'm leaving for Charlotte again in a few days. And I really want to take it with me because um, I'm just so anxious to have it done. I keep dropping things. I am sorry for bending. But this yarn I've had in my stash forever. I bought it at Black Mountain Yarn Shop way back. Way back when Black Mountain Yarn Shop really wasn't a big deal. I mean, like, it was a great yarn shop. I knew that from the very beginning. But they really hadn't hit their stride yet. And since then, they've hit their stride and sold it. And someone else is in it. But I did not have enough of this orange to do the sleeves. So, I had... Thankfully, I had another orange in my stash of lace weight, and they are very, very, very close. I mean, they are very close. And so, I feel like it matches well enough. Um, so, yeah. I can't figure out why it's um, all wrinkled, and I just shove it down in my bag like that. I have to be blocked again. And that is in this bag by... Button Jar Studios, one of my favorite makers, one of my favorite bags. That is in my bags. The African is in my bags. And then I am making my husband. Are these sleeves not the best? My friend St. Louis gave me one for my birthday one year. And I've used it so much. And so I've looked and I've looked and I've looked for them. Could not find them. Finally went to Amazon and they have them. So I love them because you can write on them. You can like dry erase. You write on them. You can erase it off. I put my um, my tape there. I just love them. I stick my needles down in the back of it. Um, so they're awesome. But what I am knitting, let me pull it out so you can see the photo. It is my pattern. It's my serendipity socks. And so, that's what they looked like when I made them. And this is a pattern of mine that I have for sale in Ravelry. And it's called Serendipity. And so, I'm making my husband a pair. And I have this much done. That's the heels. And that is the leg. He likes a long leg. So, it's taken me a little while to knit and that little progress keeper I got from Molly from a homespun house little mushrooms for my mushroom cottage I love that so this is what I've been this is just yarn from my stash the oh this is some fable that I've had forever and so that I've been working on for him. I need to start the second one because now it's time. I don't know how far to go on his toe. And um, so I'm going to start the second one and then I'll try him on him when I remember to try him on him. That is all that's in my bags actively. I have got a lot of things in my bags, but that's all that's actively. So hopefully the next time I'll have my orange sweater out of my bags Maybe Todd's socks out of my bags. And then you can see something else. I've got so many things I want to start. But I've got a shawl that I'm doing. 
um, I knit along with, with a friend in Spain. And so I'm gonna start on that next. And then I've got other socks in the make. So I'm, I, I always have to have a pair of socks on the go. So I've got a pair of socks going. Think that I got a pair going for my niece that I need to get finished. So those, we should have some different things in my bags the next time I record. Out of my bags. I only have one thing out of my bags. This is again one of my patterns, and I've showed it. I've showed you this pattern. I don't know if I showed you this this combo, but this is my hearts a foot sock, and it has the little ruffled edge. I probably should get some sock blockers. That might help you see what they look like. You can see they're little shorty socks and they're called hearts of foot because there is a little heart. You can see it right there, a little heart. In the, on the top of it. So these, um, I had a friend who doesn't knit, asked me if I'd make her a pair. I said I would. So I have to show her these if she likes them and wants to buy them then these are hers. If she says, no, make me something in different colors, then I will pro probably pop these in my Etsy shop when my Etsy shop opens back up. All right, so that's what's out of my bags. Not much, is it? So I showed you what's in my bags. I've showed you what's out of my bags. Let me show you next. I should put these back in the pattern bags so they don't get lost. Let me show you next what is in my gift bags. And that, I was gifted something. A friend of mine sent me a box unexpectedly and she was one of our niches back in Charlotte, Julie. She sent me this sweet little card and so when she saw this tea towel, she just thought of me. And so she sent it to me and look at this tea towel. It says, take life one cup at a time. And it has teacups. And then she sent me teas and a little spoon for my teas. And she sent me little bags for my teas. And, oh gosh, the box was just chock full. I'm not thinking of what else was in it. But she also sent this kit for a giveaway. And it's called the Equilateral Cowl. So that's what it looks like. And these are the colors. And I am so bad at knit alongs. I have another lady who's reached out and wants to know if I wanna do an oversized sweater knit along. And I said, yes, but I haven't even bought the yarn for that yet. And I have, we haven't even worked out all the logistics for it. It's, um, she lives in Norway. And I live here, and so we've just got to get all the little details ironed out. But I am so bad about doing things like that. I, 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 I fall by the wayside. I start this cow, and then I, unless it's a short-term cow, I kind of just lose interest or I get sidetracked. It's like squirrel. You know, I just I seem like I never get, I never achieve I never finish the cow, I guess. I don't know what I'm saying. However, so I'm going to save this and we will be doing a giveaway soon. I don't know. October is my birthday month, so maybe we'll do a birthday cow. Something like that. Okay, so that's what was in my gift bags. Now, also what I'm doing, I'm going to show you. First of all, I'll show you a picture. Okay, so you know I love to paint by number. And I've, I've showed you the last one that I finished, that, that vase of flowers. So my sister... I love hydrangeas and she knows I love hydrangeas. And so she sent me a picture one day of her hydrangeas that are blooming. Now this print, ah, I can't show you because it's on camera. I will try to put a photo in here of the photo that she sent me. That's what I will do. Because this photo that they sent me is really bad. So she sent me this photo and as soon as I saw that, I said to her, I said, oh my goodness, that would make a gorgeous paint by number. 
So that photo, and this is what I am starting. Hmm. It doesn't, it kind of looks like want want, doesn't it? Because I haven't gotten to the pretty hydrangeas yet. But as you can see, this is part of her house. And this is, these are her hydrangeas and her beautiful um, crepe myrtle tree. It's going to be pretty. Might not be that great right now, but it's going to be pretty. So I'm working on that. That's the only paint by number I have going right now. My niece right now is up in Cape Cod and she, she lives in Charlotte, but she's up there visiting. And she kept posting these photos to Instagram. And I said, oh my gosh, those are gorgeous. I said, she just bought a new house. And I said, if you want to take a, a photo, send it to me. I'll paint you a, house, a picture for your house. So she did that. So as soon as I get this done, I'm going to start on that so I can get that to her for her house. One is beautiful. It's the swan on a lake. Oh, it's gorgeous. So I'm going to get that started. Book bag. You know, I know I read more than two books in that amount of time, but I think I've already taken them to give away. I don't, I know that the only one I could find was this one. I'm like, I know I just hauled three books out of here. So I've already passed them on, but I have been reading really easy peasy reading the summer girls by Mary Allison Monroe. So this is a trilogy. It's The Summer Girls, The Summer Wind. So I've read those two and then The Summer's End. I just finished The Summer's Wind. So The Summer's End, I had to get that book yet. But good, easy reading. Anybody that knows Mary Allison Monroe, it's just good, easy reading. You're not thinking real deep, which is sometimes a very good for me. Okay, so talking about book bag. I communicate a lot with a lot of you um, about books. And so I thought it would be fun if we had a book club of sorts. Now, hopefully this will not be like my knit-alongs or my make-alongs. And hopefully I will see this through. I don't have all the details worked out yet. I don't know if we'll chit-chat back and forth. I'll tell you what we'll do. This is what we'll do. If you're going to join me in the book club, I haven't even started this book yet. So today is August the 11th, I think 10th or 11th. And I still have to edit. So we'll start the 15th starting August, <clears throat> excuse me, starting August 15th through September 15th. We'll just do, we'll do a month. Oh, this is little words. <laughs> oh, Okay, so this book has, um, you know what? Here's how we'll do it. This book has 315 pages and the words are fairly small. So what we'll do, I still think we can read it in a month. We're going to go for a month. August 15th to September 15th. If you're going to read along with me, let me know through Instagram. Message me. And what I will do is I will start a group thread in the message of our Ruby Moss Cottage books or read with me or something. And we will be able to just give our input back and forth. It's not going to be a formal, I'm going to ask you questions, give me your feedback. I want it to be just a collaboration. I want us to all in, you know, just give our input. Um, what I might do is week by week say, okay, this week we're only going to talk about pages one through whatever. I'll divide that up into a four week discussion. So you will know that, okay, this week, because if someone's only, if someone sits down and reads this in a week, someone that's going to take all month doesn't want to know what's going to happen at the end. Make sense? So I will divide this into four weeks. We'll have four weekly conversations about those pages. Okay? Makes sense? All right. So the book I've chosen first is called To Shake the Sleeping Self. And it's by Jedediah Jenkins. And it's a journey from Oregon to Patagonia and a quest for a life with no regret. Here's what got me. My word for the year is no regret. And so I was literally thinking about this book club 
and I was in a little shop here in town and I saw this book and I thought, oh, because Cheryl Strayed, if you remember, she wrote the book Wild or I think it was called Wild. She did, um, a tr she walked a trail by herself over on, on the, I don't know if it was what part of the wet on the Western side. Anyway, she did this, this journey, um, this trail, she walked it and it was a big deal a couple of years ago and it was a really good book. So she said, thrilling, tender, utterly absorbing, every chapter shimmered with truth. So to shake the sleeping self is the book we're going to read first by Jedediah Jenkins. Okay. So I'm sure Amazon has it. I'm sure your local bookstore has it. But I just thought it would be a good read. So that is going to be our August, September book for our book club. To Shake the Sleeping Self. Well, now what do we have here? Wow, I have flown right through this. I seriously thought, oh, I haven't podcast for so long. I'm going to have so much to say. This is going to be two hours long. But really, we've flown right through all of this. What I have left are some things to show you in my shopping bags that I have bought recently that I love. I'll show you today what I bought today at the yarn shop. This is um, Silver Threads and Golden Needles is what the name of the yarn shop is. But I love this set of minis. Are those not gorgeous? So these will be turned into cuffs, heels, and toes to my socks that I make more than likely. But that just that big um, grouping, I've got a shadow on me. I hope it's not. Hope you can see. But I got that today. Couldn't pass that up. Then as far as yarn, I had bought, I'd ordered this from Molly from Homespun House. It is... Um, Hmm. I don't know the colors because she's listed three. Flash Dance, Barbie, I can tell, would be the pink. Refresh, and Electric Eel. I'm saying this is probably Flash Dance. Yeah, that would be Flash Dance. So anyway. That color set Molly had popped in her shop. I don't think she's going to make it again. I think they were leftovers that she had from her Patreons, and I fell in love with it. So I'm going to make socks, obviously, with that, with the heels, toes, and cuffs. So that's all the yarn. I really do not buy a lot of yarn. I obviously do not need a lot of yarn. I don't know if you can see it, but I've got it behind me. I've got it there. I've got it everywhere. And so I don't typically buy yarn, but... Sometimes you just see something's like, oh, I got to have it. So that, that was the yarn that I bought. Um, I might buy it if I, if I need a sweater's quantity, depending on the weight. I might not have enough for sweater's quantity, but um, more than likely, I try to use everything from stash that I can. Something else that I bought. I am crazy about um, Katie Daisy. Kate Daisy. Is it Kate Daisy or Katie? Katie Daisy. I'm... If you know her, she wrote the book, How to Be a Wildflower, and then she's got another book out, How to, I don't know, something about the moon. Anyway, I love her artwork. It is absolutely stunning. So I saw this deck of cards, and it's based on the book, How to Be a Wildflower, and I have the book, I have the book, but in the box is this beautiful deck of cards. And so every day you pull a card. And it has a quote. So like, this is the card I pulled today. The front of it is so beautiful. And then the, the back side says, it is in the shelter of each other that people live. It's an Irish Proverbs. So see, so the front is a photo and the back is a little, just a little saying for the day. And I need that because I am a real, um, I am a real... recluse is a bit much, but you know, I'm an introvert. I can, I can park myself up here on this mountain for days on end. If I didn't need groceries or need to take the trash down or 
have to go to the groceries. I said groceries. I have to go to the mailbox or, you know, it just, I could sit up here for days on end and, um, like going to the yarn shop today and sitting for that long of a time was, I was exhausted by the time I got home because I, it's energy for me to socialize like that. And I love it when I'm there and I'm in it. I, I really love it, but it's not till I leave that I'm just whoo, drained. And so that, that was a really good uh, quote for me today. That it is in the shelter of each other that people live. Cause it's like, I need those people around me. They feed me. They, you know, like being in that yarn shop today that fed my creativity and I, that is who I am. You know, if I can't create, I, I wouldn't know who, who I was. So it's just little, little sayings every day. Now, tomorrow's card that I'm going to pull, I might have to shove it back in the ball because I don't like snakes. I don't, I don't even want to, I don't even, as a matter of fact, I'm not even reading it. I'm sticking it back in the pile. I'll deal with it another day. I know I don't want to deal with tomorrow. Oh, that's much better. Tomorrow's foxgloves. So I'll at least not read what the card says. But I'm sure you can get these little boutiques or you might even be able to get them on Amazon. But if that's something that you would like to enjoy. I like to share the things that I really like. So I'm thinking, hey, you know what? They might need, you know... Okay, for instance, this next thing I'm going to buy, I'm going to show you, I saw um, Andrea Mowry had it. So, you know, kind of like we just kind of help each other out along this journey, and I can show you things that you might need or you might want. So, this is the Mag, it's sold by Mag by, Fi Mag by Fibers, it's the Maxwell Collection. I have wanted this for so long. Anyway, you open it up, it's got a little leather strap to it. And when you open, you unstrap it, and you unroll it, and then you, ta-da, there's all your needles. So I have all of my large interchangeable likeies, have all of my small, sorry, small interchangeables. I have this little zippered pouch is full of notions. I have all of my cables that I need for my interchangeables down through here. Um, my needle cozy. I just, and it can hold so much more. I love this thing. Absolutely love it. So well made. It just rolls so nicely. It fits down in your knitting bag. I tr it travels well. That's what I like about it. I don't carry it with me, obviously, just with my knitting, each knitting project. But if I'm traveling, because it never fails, if I'm traveling, I want to start a new project. I don't have the right needles. So now they travel with me. I have all the notions that I need, the needles that I need, and I'm ready to cast on like that. So that is what I bought in my shopping bags. And that's it. I don't think I have anything else. Let me check my notes. Oh, there's something I want to tell you. Um, this is kind of out of my bags. Remember the sweater that I showed you? It was the um, something heel pullover. But it was the sweater that was kind of like a green and it had the, the um, color work arms. Well, I got that out of the bag and start working on it. This has been quite a few weeks ago. This is probably shortly after our podcast last. So I can't remember all the details. But I got it out to start working on the arms. And I don't know why. I don't know why. But I decided it wasn't for me. And so I cannot remember. I wish I could remember why. I was chatting back and forth with my sister that night. So she might remember why. But... I don't know if I didn't have an, the needles. I don't know. Anyway, it was no longer working. And I knew that it was beyond hope. So I frogged that. And oh, as I pulled it, I felt better and better. 
So that is completely, the body of the sweater, everything completely unraveled, put back in stash, and that's cleared space in my head. It's cleared space in my knitting bags and cleared space in my head. So that is the Richmond Hill pullover. That's what it was. So that is no longer. I frogged that and it feels good. So finally made that decision to settle on it. And it was one of those things where you knew, I knew in my mind it has to be done. But you're always there, will I regret it? Will I regret it? But as soon as I started unraveling, it was like I knew, oh, this is the right thing to do. So I will not knit that pattern again. There is no way I'm knitting all of that again. So many people had could not get gauge on that sweater. I mean, everybody's sweaters were too big and it's just not worth it. I thought, okay, I'm not, I'm not even fooling with this again. So that's out of my bags completely, literally out of my bags. And um, yeah, so you won't be seeing that. So I know a lot of people liked that sweater and I did too. I love the concept. I love the sleeves. I love the, the um, colors that I was using. It was all just so pretty and um then it was not meant to be so yeah that was uh, i wanted to show you that, that tell you that that was out of my bags too because a lot of you had talked about it so that's it i hope whew, i hope it will not take me as long to record again oh you know what i see something right here that my sister oh i see two things here okay <laughs> these one is in my gift bag one's in my shopping bag this gift bag i bought it because i saw it on instagram posy from um what is her name is posy let me see if it's on here oh. uh alicia polson is her name and her shop is co called posy posy gets cozy or something like that but anyway, on Instagram, she's Alicia Polson. And so it, this little cross stitch thing is called the Stitchers RSVP. And when I saw this, I thought of me and my daughter, but especially my daughter. So I'm going to make this for our youngest daughter. But it says, listen, I still want to be invited, but I'm not coming. <laughs> and that is us. So I'm going to make that for her. I don't know when, but I'm going to make that for her. And then in our in my gift bag, my sister one of my sisters, my oldest sister, the one that you know the most, uh, you see the most, um, when they were here, we were down this little shop and I, had, we had looked at these together before and I, I just loved them and I was actually going to buy it and she took it out of my hands. But this is, uh, uh, that it's a, uh, I don't know what it is. I thought it would just be quickly a quick put together, but no, it is like glued and really details to put together but it is a miniature little library can you see that oh my goodness I'm so in love with that so it's called Sam's study but it will make a Joyce's study and that I'm going to start that at some point so sweet of her to do that I just love that so that oh, I don't know when I'm going to start it I opened it all up and I thought, oh, I'm going to check this out. And then I got so intimidated. I just put it back in the box, but I'm going to get started on that. So that was my gift bag. So I love that so much. All right. What do I have coming up other than a couple trips to Charlotte? Probably won't record again before Labor Day. So we'll have that, which is Todd's birthday and our daughter's birthday. Um, and then that's it. We don't have any more fam intimate family birthdays. We have some extended family birthdays. Um, I'm going to take my mom on a little trip so that she can get out and about. She's recovering from her knee and she's just ready to go back and see some friends and spend some time with some people she hasn't seen for a while. So I told her I'd take her to do that. And other than that, that is all I've got going on. I'm going to um, hopefully get that orange glad sweater finished soon. And I'm going to do some hiking this weekend. That'll be fun. 
But other than that, that is all we have going on. So just remember that in all you do, take it one stitch at a time.